Hi, thanks for watching the Generations video. Uh, this is a little video to show you how you can take a flat image and uh, dress it up a little bit by using the dividing tools within that outline view. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a four leaf clover and we're going to use that uh, for our St. Patrick's Day um, little project. So what I'm going to do is I have generations open and here I do have my 100 by 100 hoop open and showing and that's something I can get in my view preferences and remember your view preferences are under view and then view preferences. To bring in the image that I'd like to digitize this is something I found off of um, off the internet so I'm going to go to create and insert image and when I click on insert image my directories in my computer come up and I believe I stored this on my desktop so I'm just gonna left click on desktop uh, maybe not um, sometimes I forget where I store things anyway we're gonna scroll down and there's the four leaf clover now it is a GIF file a GIF and uh, we'll press OK and when we press OK it brings it into the program now it does bring it in as a scanned image I will leave it as is and press OK when we press OK, it's going to convert it from, in the simplified view, it's showing us what Generations is uh, translating it to. And if we click on Original View, that's the original artwork itself. If we look at some of these edges, you can see some of these edges are a little bit hairy, but um, it looks like Generations kind of simplified that and smoothed them out a bit. If I want to further go into the program and uh, and edit it, I can click on the edit button. And this is in the cartoon editor and here what I'm really checking for, I want to make sure on the color bar on the left hand side that I've got the um, the minimum colors for this design and it looks like I do. I have the white background, the black outline, and then the green uh, fill on the inside. So I'm happy with that and I can even you know zoom in on this design you can see it's 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 rather even though from far away the design looks nice but if we look on the left hand side which is the original artwork it's very um, it's not so great you know it's it's got variations of color in there as well as um, some kind of jagged or corners or I'm sorry some jagged edges um, but it, what's nice is that it looks like Generations did a really good job of translating this to something smoother. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit exit because I'm happy with those results. I'll hit the continue button and with the size I will leave the size as is. Um, we, we can always change that later so we'll just press OK and then I will hit my generate button on the right hand side. When I generate the stitches I can see the design. I'm going to go ahead and view that in the 3D stitch view which is on my view toolbar or I can go up to view and then 3D stitch view and you can see what the program did is it just gave it one flat fill and what we're going to do is we're actually going to divide up this uh, this clover so we can get a little bit more depth and dimension in there so I'm just going to zoom in with a left click on the zoom in tool and left single click and what I'd like to do is I'd like to divide these up uh, I'd like to divide the stem away from each clover, divide each clover from each other, and actually divide each clover in half. That way I can give each clover different directions for the stitching so it gives it a little bit more dimension. So to divide it up, I'm going to right click on the clover itself and you can tell it's selected because it does have the blue and white flashing lines. I will then go to the outline view, which is view and then view outline and in the outline view you can see the outline of the what generations has drawn now what we see in the background this white box and this black that is the original artwork and we can turn that original artwork off with the hide view image icon at the top or we can go up to view and go up to view and then hide image and when we left click on hide image that template goes off in the background the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it in edit outline mode and if we go up to outline go to edit outline mode and that way I can kind of see through 
that area rather than seeing it as, as a uh, shaded and gray area. First thing we'd like to do is uh, divide these areas up. So I'll go to Outline on the main menu bar. And the first one I'm going to use is Divide with a Line. And when I choose Divide with Line, you can see my cursor turns into a crosshair and I'm going to divide that stem. To divide the stem, I'm going to come outside the area, left click, stretch it across where I want to cut. This kind of acts like the scissors. Left click again, and then I will hit enter on my keyboard. That actually separated it from the other areas. I'll press escape to get out of the tool and right click off to the side. Now, if I right click on the stem, it is its own. And if I right click on these areas, they are their own too. So I'll right click off to the side and generate and you can see visually what we've done. Uh, you can see that when we actually divided the stem it gives it a different stitch fill which is really nice um, you know giving it a little bit of dimension. And you can see on the left hand side on the stitch sequence viewer now we have two frames instead of one. So we'll go back and the next step that we want to take is actually dividing this up into four uh, individual clovers. So I'll we'll right click on that area, go to the outline view by going to view, and then view outline, left click. And in here you can choose to be in the edit outline mode or not. It doesn't matter. But this time I'm going to leave it as is, but I'm going to divide with a curve. And when I left click on divide with a curve, Divide with a curve acts like divide with a line, but gives you multiple points. Left clicks are corner points, right clicks are smooth points. So I'll left click, and then I'll right click here, and then I'll left click here. And you can see I have to start outside and end outside. I'll hit enter on my keyboard, and then I will left click here, left click here, and left click here. I'm sorry, that was a right click in the middle. I'll press escape. Or, I'm sorry, I press enter to end the inputting and then press escape to get out of the tool. I'll right click out, off to the side again, hit generate, and now you can see they are all separated. We're going to go in further and separate them even more. I am going to select all of them by control and right click and then go to view and then view outline. Go up to outline and then divide with a curve. So what I'm going to do here is start outside the area, right click, right click, I'll do, and then stretch it all the way here, and left click, enter. I'll, for this one I'll do a left click, right click, left click, enter, left click, right click, left click, enter, and left click, right click, left click enter. Press escape to get out of the tool, right click off to the side, regenerate my stitches and now you can see I've got several uh, different frames here. It looks like I, when I cut it up I maybe cut up a couple little pieces so I'm just gonna get rid of those and I see that in my stitch sequence viewer so I'll left click inside frame number two it'll select that area and then I'll hold my control key and left click, click inside frame number seven. You can see there are two very small areas. While holding the control, I'll hit delete to get rid of those areas. Otherwise, it would only drop down a couple of stitches.